Thank you. All right, got a news alert out of Washington for you. Maybe some good news. The government will not shut down. The stopgap funding bill to avoid a partial shutdown now has enough votes in the House to pass. They got the green light in the Senate yesterday afternoon, so the government will continue to roll on. We'll call that good news. All right, now back to stocks. Markets getting ready to say good riddance to a brutal September. Take a look at some of the ugly numbers. The Dow and the S&P 500 falling 7% this month. The NASDAQ is down 8%. It is the worst September for the Dow since 2002. Yeah, believe it or not, the Dow had a worse month than September of 2008, right when the financial crisis was really just starting to kick off. All three indices, they're on track for a third straight quarterly loss, something we have not seen in years. But let's get a little more optimistic. We had some bad inflation data again today, and stocks, they're not selling off in a big way. Dow's down 100 points. Joining us is Joanne Feeney, partner and portfolio manager at Advisors Capital Management, and Matt Maley, chief market strategist at Miller Tabak. Matt, it's good to have you back on. I had this whole thing planned where I was going to be like, ooh, the markets are up nicely, even with the bad inflation data. Is that a good sign? But now the markets are turning on me and turning on everybody, by the way. But you get my point. If we can even stay sort of flat-ish with hot inflation data, is that maybe a near-term sign that we're just way oversold? Well, it certainly could be. I mean, one of the things that, you know, the market is getting oversold and, and, and the one thing that's, it's, I mean, sentiment is, is getting ridiculously bearish. Uh, so those are the types of things you, you do see, tend to see at a bottom. One thing I am concerned about, though, is if we do have some sort of a blow up, you know, the, the second leg of bear markets are, are, are when we have those, when, when Enron shows up or Bernie Madoff shows up and, and causes some, some liquidations to take place. And I also know that even though September is usually the worst day of the year, when September's are really, really tough, the bottom usually comes at some point in October. October ends up being a better month, but that um, comes, t- tends to come then. So I, at some point, even if we make, could see a short-term bounce soon, I do think uh, we'll probably see lower lows before too long. Okay, lower lows. Yikes. All right, look, Joanne, let's, again, let's try to be a little more optimistic on this Friday, shall we? Um, I know something about inventories. My wife works in consumer products and, and sort of retail-ish. We talked about it with Nike. When a company has too much of anything, they try to sell it off. A big beneficiary of that tends to be a company like a TJ Maxx, does it not? They get to buy all that excess inventory and the cheap. You, you buy it for less than retail. You feel good. They feel good. Is that a stock you like? Yeah. Hey, Brian. TJ Maxx is a pretty good place to be at this point in time. I mean, when you have a recession threat, you do see consumers shifting down to cheaper opportunities. And TJ Maxx not only has that inventory that they can dip into and get at relatively low cost, but they're also, I think, going to see more sustained demand than some of the higher end retailers out there. So good place to hide. You know, it has a good opportunity here. It's, it's been outperforming, you know, and I, I think that investors have to decide right now whether they're in it for the long haul, which they ought to be, and how perhaps to take advantage of some of the opportunities that have come along yep. uh, in this market. And Joanne, what about a McDonald's as well? Yeah, McDonald's is another good sort of recession resilient play. You know, people shift down from those mid market, uh, you know, casual food restaurants down to a McDonald's. You know, they're taking advantage of that and they're an extremely well run company and the loyalty program has been going very well. So, again, another company with a good dividend. You know, one of the things to do in this kind of a market is to make sure your dividend income is not just going to sustain some of your cash flow, but those dividends are going to be raised you know, over time. And and McDonald's has been very good at that. 